So hello, hi, uh, welcome to my living room. My name is Maya and uh, contrary to most of you, I assume uh, I'm not an educator, though I did work in education for some time. Um, I work uh, for an NGO and today I want to talk about why NGOs and educators should work together more. Um, but before I start, I want to talk a bit about the organization I work for. Um, we're called Today is a New Day. We're a civic tech NGO. So that means we work at the overlap of civil society and technology. That's why it's even more embarrassing. I can't make my presentation work. Um, but you know, technology happens uh, to all of us. Um, so we, uh, we work primarily in two areas. So one area is we work with big data, open government and transparency. And the second area is we work uh, um, we built social justice campaign, uh, mostly using gamification and humor to engage our audience. Uh, we exist since 2012. Uh, we have launched more than 80 campaigns and all of our campaigns are open source. Um, and uh, even the, when we build our campaigns, we uh, try if possible to use open source uh, technology to build those campaigns. Uh, so today I want to show you how uh, when NGOs and educators collaborate together, magic happens. And I want to show you five benefits of such collaboration. Um, and to start off, um, before I start though, I want to say that this is a really short talk and I'm going to be using a bunch of examples. So like if you have any extra questions, I'm very um, willing to chat with you after the presentation. My email is at the top and at the bottom of my presentation. Um, so the first, uh, imp uh, the first uh, benefit of co collaboration between open, open civic tech and educator, educators is that civic tech can help connect your educational activities with real life impact. Uh, the example I want to use here is participatory budget uh, or participatory budgeting. It's an initiative where municipalities allocate a part of their funds um, so that citizens suggest projects and then vote on the project and municipality only implements them but doesn't get involved in the previous steps. Um, we have adapted an open source platform for participatory budget um, and we work with a lot of uh, municipalities in Slovenia in uh, implementing participatory budgeting. Uh, an interesting thing about participatory budgeting is that it often is open to individuals from 15 years onwards, um, contrary to elections where people who are 18 or 21 can, uh, partic can only participate. So what we found out is that it's really useful when in municipalities that do participatory budgeting, we reach out to schools and work with local high schools. Um, because that way we can do brain, we do brainstorming sessions, we do workshops with students, we help them identify problems, we help them identify solutions, and then they can um, file or submit their proposals for projects. Those proposals are then voted on and often they're actually voted in uh, and implemented by, the, uh, by a municipality. Um, and we found out that students get really excited when um, their work in classroom has real life impact and that really motivates them. So that's like one of the benefits. The second benefit is um, community. Working with open source programs can make you a part of a much greater community uh, than just your classroom. And I think you guys all know that, uh, but specifically I wanna talk maybe about one example that can clarify that. Um, it's a project Luftdaten um, that calls, it's a German initiative that calls on citizens uh, to set up individual um, air quality measuring stations at home that they can themselves build uh, so that we have better picture of air quality and, and more reliable and accurate data regarding air quality. We found those, that idea very exciting, especially because Slovenia, which is where we work, has only two uh, air, me air quality measuring stations in the whole of country. So we decided to set up workshops with students from high schools and universities 
where we together, we help them build um, air quality sensors. It's not as hard as it might sound. So we built together air quality sensors. They took those sensors back home. They set them up on their balconies or in, on their windows. Um, and they started uh, 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 collecting data. Uh, and they uh, became a part of this great uh, initiative, which again was for them exciting because it wasn't just them measuring air quality on their balcony, but it was them being part of this European-based project and European-based initiative. Um, the third um, benefit I want to talk about is engagement. Uh, civic tech companies can be different and sometimes more engaging than your classroom experience, especially maybe today when half of the world is in lockdown and it's really hard to create these engaging experiences or visit institutions, create one-on-one -on -one experiences. So the project, an example for that I want to talk about is still in development, doesn't exist yet. But we're working with youth workers in the region, in Slovenia, Croatia, and Serbia, to develop a game that would put students um, in, the, in, the, um, in the shoes of social activists um, and uh, make them uh, in the game, implement a project, implement a campaign, implement a, in, in, an initiative. And in the game, they, would be, they will be faced with all the difficulties and barriers they might face in real life. So bureaucracy, politics, apathy, um, and so on. Uh, so it's a project that can really, we believe, enrich uh, political, civil, uh, civic edu ed uh, education, uh, and it can create an important uh, experience for students. And by no means we are unique in that. There's a bunch of these kind of initiatives, um, educational games that can help you and that you could maybe uh, adapt uh, and work with. Uh, and they can be, uh, and they mostly are open source. Uh, fourthly, civic education. Um, I think ci civic tech is really great uh, to collaborate with when it comes to civic education. I wanna present the project Parlameter, which is our biggest project a uh, platform for analyzing and collecting parliamentary data. We developed it because parliamentary data is, uh, is actually really untransparent and really hard to access. Um, now, once we developed this, we were thinking, how can we make it uh, useful for students or people who might um, need this data? And we actually set up uh, several One seminars. One minute left. Thank you. So we set up, up several seminars where we work with students uh, to analyze uh, where we work with students, we take uh, real data that we collect from Parliament to, and we analyze the, this data, we try to understand patterns, we try to see, um, uh, see uh, behavior and so on. So it's, um, in a way, it's like very practical uh, education. So I think in your community also probably, there are already organizations that are maybe collecting data or doing analysis to which you might not have um, access, but if you connect with them, your students and you can together um, do, uh, work and do this practical work. Okay, I have another one, which is innovation, but I will uh, skip that one and just uh, say that you can reach out. Uh, um, we, we, I, I would be happy to discuss further.